Hello everyone, my name is Alberto, welcome back to my channel. I've been asked to reproduce this crochet necklace. Um, so what I decided to do is to film the process. Unfortunately, as you will see, for the first part I had knocked the camera without noticing, so it's a bit out of focus, but it is quite simple, so I'll try to guide you vocally, let's say. Uh, I already prepared these discs, because uh, they're made the same exact way as the pot holders I did in another video, so I'll link that up if you're interested. They're very simple. Uh, she did buy this red cotton for me to use, so that's what I did. It's a little bit thinner than what they used in the reference picture, but it's fine. So now we're gonna make these sort of loops that, again, are very, very simple and are the only other part of the necklace that we're missing. I already prepared some, as you can see, to speed up the whole process because it does take a little bit of time. We're gonna start with our cotton and our crochet hook. In this case, I have a cr five crochet hook, five millimeter, but it depends on the yarn you're using. You could use a thicker one or thinner. And I just started by creating a very, very long chain, just a very simple chain. That's gonna be the base. And I sort of established the length just by eyeballing. Uh, when you're happy with the length, then you're just gonna make sure that you don't twist it and join with the first chain with a simple slip stitch as in everything else. Once that's done, we're gonna turn chain two and then very, very simply do a single crochet in every single stitch. And that's gonna be the foundation for our little band. And here, luckily the camera was better, so hopefully you can see. Once we've finished, then we join with a slip stitch into the first stitch as usual and do another round of single crochet. And this is gonna be basically establishing the thickness of our band. In my case, I only did two rounds of single crochet, but you could do more or even less if you're using a thicker yarn maybe. Uh, but I thought that would sort of contrast better with the very filled in plain discs because at least it has some thickness to it. So yes, I finished my two rounds of single crochet and I have my nice and full band. As you can see, it's looking a lot better. And that's it. You're just gonna single crochet all the way. Very, very simple. When you get to the end, as usual, slip stitch, and then we're gonna pass the little loop through in order to block the stitch. I'm not cutting away any thread yet. I'm just gonna leave, leave a long tail of yarn because we're gonna need it later to attach them together. Uh, we have two in this case because we have the starting and end. Uh, we can weave one in, tie it, there's many options. I wove it through and then just tied it to the new one. So to prepare our pieces we're gonna steam them and this is gonna help with the shape because you can see these um, circles can get quite octagonal <laughs> if you make them with a thin yarn but it's usually very simply fixable with just some steam and reshaping but in case it doesn't work enough you can also work a round of single crochet all around without any augmentations and that sort of evens everything out and makes it more circular. In my case I didn't want to add any more layers so I just steamed it and then ironed it in place just pulling slightly. You can manipulate them quite easily especially with the steam because it's cotton so it becomes very soft but when it's wet or steamed and then it dries sort of in, in that shape. So it worked quite well for me. And I'm just steaming the bands just sort of to keep them nice and tidy looking. And it just simply without pulling, because we don't want to stretch them, 
but we're just gonna make sure that they're nice and flat and clean. So like that, we're simply gonna press it with some steam and let it dry. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for all the others, of course. When it comes to joining them, I did some trials before off camera for the end part because that's basically the hook that keeps it together. What I figured out is that it's just best to attach the first uh, loop a little lower, so obviously not on the edge. So the other one will have some grip when it loops around it in order to close it because that's going to be the opening and closing of our necklace thingy. So this is what I did, and now I'm going to show you how I attached all the other pieces, because again, very simple, just need a yarn needle. And we start with all the tails that we have. So to give it a little bit more strength, I'm going to weave in a couple of stitches, because otherwise the oldest strength would be on the little stitch at the end. Well, like that, we're gonna grip onto two, three stitches. So it's gonna have a bit more strength and be a bit more resistant. So we're just gonna weave it through a couple stitches. Uh, again, just eyeball it, but you know, to make sure that it lasts a bit longer. And we go to the end without the tail. And even in the band, we're going to pick up at least three single crochets because then we have sort of a bigger, flatter surface to attach. And again, it's going to support the tension a lot more. This is not going to have a lot of tension in, in the way of pulling, but it, being cotton is quite heavy. So the, the weight, all of the circles, and it's quite a long necklace. So to give it the best chance, I'm gonna make it as durable as possible. So we're gonna weave in and pick up, as I said, three double crochets on the band and about the same amount on the disc. And we're just going to stitch them together on the front. And on the back, we can leave a bit longer loops. It's not a big deal because it's not gonna show. Um, it's not very visible in general, but if you wanna hide it as much as possible, then even in the back, you're just gonna weave the stitches in through the single crochets, and that way it's gonna be basically invisible. So you just poke it through the back, and then again, secure it going not only on the border, because you could stitch like a simple whip stitch on the border could work, but I just want it to be super, super safe. So I just prefer to weave through a couple stitches and that way it supports its weight more. So this is it, as you see, very simple. We're just gonna stitch them together. And then when we get to the end, we're gonna tie it to itself and I just wove it through again because weaving in the ends is always sort of the best option for crochet and knitting when you get to finishing. Especially in a piece like this, this is not going to be under a lot of stress. So it, it's not probably not even going to be washed ever. So you could just weave in the ends just sort of to make it as clean as possible. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing. I use the picture as a reference to see in which order to attach them, but I did sort of use it as an inspiration. It might not be exactly the same measurements, but you get the idea that it is the same necklace. So that's what was important for me. So this is it. Uh, as I said, very simple. In the end, you'll see the comparison between the original and what I did. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe if you aren't. It's a great help. And I'll see you next time. 
So have a great day. Bye.